First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Jackie Izzo is the mayor of Rome. And Mayor Izzo, good morning. Good morning. You know, I um, I have to say, don't ever let anybody say that if we're if we find out about a story and someone asks us to hold it, don't ever <laughs> let anybody say we wouldn't honor that because we did in this case. Uh, we're about to launch a story about uh, about Rome's first ever firefighter who's a female, and yeah, and and correct. Jack and Jackie was like, whoa, 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 we have a big ceremony coming up. You can't do it yet. Please don't, don't do it yet. you dare. And we didn't. So here we are. And we appreciate that. It was kind of a big moment for our department, pretty historic. So we uh, we kind of wanted to hold the suspense until the, the swearing in. Well, uh, I guess I, I'd like your opinion being Rome's first female mayor. Um, how is it that we have not had a female firefighter in the city of Rome yet? This is the first time. You would think that would come before the first female mayor. Right? I would think, yeah. Uh, did, <laughs> did that surprise you, or did you yeah. know that all along? I mean, it, it was there a recruit? Did you recruit to get a female, or or did she just come forward? Give us the, the background here. No. Actually, um, we've had female uh, candidates before. The physical agility test is very uh, grueling. You really have to train for it. And this is what set Jamie apart. After she took it the first time, she was determined she wanted to be a firefighter. So she contacted the chief and said, you know, what do I need to do? And he was very encouraging. He, he wanted her to continue. So she, she got a personal trainer, and uh, wow. she actually trained for the test. But I'll tell you, my nephew uh, went through that last year. He, got, uh, he actually trained for the test for almost a year. Mm-hmm. It's it, there's a lot that goes on during the test, uh, and you know, firefighters work as a team. When they get to a scene of a fire, they can't be worried about if somebody can't pull their weight, You're right. uh, depending You're on right. what's going on yeah. in the situation. Because you only have a split second usually to make those decisions. Yeah. So it was nothing uh, against other female candidates. We've had other females that I think would have been great firefighters, but just like a lot of the men. They couldn't pass the physical agility. In fact, in this class where we hired two, uh, we had quite a few males fail that day as well. All right. Well, that's, uh, I mean, uh, I think it's important to note that it's not just uh, women that uh, that don't make it through. Um, men don't make it through as well. Any r- uh, truth to the rumor that uh, you put your uh, your coaching whistle back on and, uh, <laughs> and you're actually, the, you were the personal trainer for this firefighter? <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, when I was coaching, uh, at that time, the city was looking into whether the test was, whether a female could even pass that test. So I brought a couple of my very well-conditioned high school players over, and we put them through the agility test. Interesting. And they they couldn't make it. Wow. Uh, And then, uh, so, well, you've got to carry a hose full of water quite a way. There's a lot of different things you have to do. And uh, at that point... Everyone realized, wow, you know, this is going to be a challenge. And that was 30, you know, probably 20, 30 years ago that yeah. we did that. So, oh. Well, that means one um, thing's for sure. You better not mess with uh, Rome's first female firefighter. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, to, in order to pass this thing, that's a big deal. Well, it is. And, you know, everyone at the scene has to have, it's, it's a team, and they've got to have the confidence that everybody can pull their weight, so to speak regardless of what's happening. You know, you're carrying ladders, you're carrying hoses yeah. full of water, you're going up on roofs, you're, you know, you've got axes, you've got to break windows, you've got to get into the eaves. There's just so many things that go on there, and uh, it takes it takes a lot. It's grueling. So you know, we're really happy, though. Jamie's going to fit in really well. She's 35 years old, so she's an older okay. firefighter, and that's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, and she's um, she, she really wanted to be a firefighter, which most of ours... The problem in this class is we wish we had more spots. We had a lot of great candidates. Um, we will tell you uh, a, little, to a little sneak behind uh, our curtain here. Um, Jeff uh, Manaski actually failed the test. Uh, <laughs> he was going to be a firefighter, and instead he's now working for Marianne Buttonshine. So that agility test wasn't quite as rigorous. I don't believe. Yes, Jeff, I uh, I listened to that the other morning. Congratulations. I'm sure our paths are going to cross now much more often. <laughs> um want to wish you well in your, your new position. Well, I really appreciate that, Mayor. I look forward to it. 
and hopefully our paths don't cross on some type of an obstacle course. <laughs> no, because, no, uh, no, no, no. We uh, will just uh, we'll be together at all sorts of different things, and um, we'll be looking to your office for some guidance sometimes. So. No, no, no. All very friendly. We we don't like to get into <laughs> right. confrontations with our colleagues. Occasional uh, arm wrestle, maybe, but... You know. uh, <laughs> how do you think you do with this fitness program? Do you think you could pass this agility test? The short um, answer is me? no. No, no, me. No, I'm just kidding me. Oh, you? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure really... You're, you're, uh, I don't know. I doubt it. If all you didn't I, train for it, I doubt it. All I know is, uh, is Mary Zoe has just destroyed my hopes of ever becoming a firefighter. I realize <laughs> not even going to try. I couldn't do it. All right. Um, I, 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 go ahead. I think it's probably past you guys by. I think it is, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Definitely me. Um, okay, uh, Mayor, I want to ask you, um, I, again, this is great news. And uh, Her last name is Jamie, the firefighter. Uh, Jamie's last Ross. Oh, Ross. I'm sorry to throw that at you, yeah. but I didn't have that written down. No, no, sorry. I didn't Jamie Ross. For a second. Uh, okay, I, I did want to ask you about the, you know, we have, we spent a, what, uh, I hate to say that we're, we're winding down on the summer, but we are. Um, and I, well, it was a really good summer. It, it was a summer where we're, we're coming back. But as we look around the country in these areas that were really in good shape with COVID, Houston, uh, or, or I should say the, the whole state of Texas, uh, especially the more populated areas of Texas and Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, states uh, that really have resisted when it comes to the masks and resisted when it comes to the vaccines. I'm hoping that that plays a role for us, but it's got to make uh, all of us a little nervous as we're heading into the fall. I think What's irritated me the most from the very beginning of all of this is that both sides took a public health crisis and made it a political tool. Yeah. And it's, it's hurt. Now we're seeing the remnants of that. If we recall during the campaign last year, you had high-ranking Democrats, including the president, the current president, saying he wouldn't, doesn't know if he would take the vaccine mm-hmm. because the former president, it was being developed under the former president's uh, watch. Well, that has long-term effects, and we're seeing that now. It does, yeah. People were skeptical. Uh, now the governor of Texas has the virus. Uh, they've been resistant there. It's a virus. You know, the, the vaccine was a miracle. It's our. It was probably our way out, but the longer that the virus circulates, the more mutations come about, and these Vaccines were developed with a certain mutation or, or a certain basis of the coronavirus uh, in mind. So now, as we get these different variants, they can do different things. As I listened to Dr. Hall the other day. Yeah. Um, so we still have to be vigilant. And yes, our numbers are going up. Uh, quite frankly, uh, our vaccination rate in our zip code in Rome isn't where I would like it to be. Mm-hmm. It's still too low. I would encourage everyone to get a vaccine because what's happening is we are having breakthrough cases, but the vaccines are still effective in doing what they're supposed to do, which is to keep you out of the hospital, keep you off a ventilator, keep you off oxygen. You'll have milder symptoms, but you will not be catastrophically ill. And I can tell you that right now we have some people that are extremely ill, even in our own community with COVID who have no underlying conditions, there's no reason they should have this illness and be this sick. We, uh, we had a, uh, a woman on yesterday whose uh, daughter, 28 years old, uh, was pregnant. She had talked her daughter into not getting the vaccine. Her daughter caught the Delta variant and uh, is just now beginning to recover. She had the baby in an emergency C-section, but that, that woman, that 28-year-old, still cannot spend any time. She's still recovering to the point where she can't even take care of her own baby. And and she almost died. They thought she was going to die. This is a 28-year-old with no underlying health conditions. The only health condition she had was she was pregnant. And, um, you know, you're hearing a lot of people who resisted the vaccine prior who have gotten the virus and had a very bad outcome or maybe a fortunate one, but are now saying, I was wrong, please get this vaccine. 
And I understand people's reluctance. The, vi- the 